Okay, so I learned my lesson from last time. The boat was very quiet. So I've hidden into my car. My car has not been driven um, very often, yet it's still a mess. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to read chapter 15 from Pay It Forward, and this is from Arlene. Um, last time we heard from Arlene and Ruben, we kind of, through Trevor's diary, were trying to figure out if they were together or not. Um, if something happened, right? Anyways, let's find out. Loretta stirred milk into her coffee cup with that little clink-clink sound that grated on Arlene's nerves. Loretta's Mr. Coffee Machine was broken again, and since she had never been any too fond of instant, she had shown up at Arlene's house for coffee this morning. Arlene's Mr. Coffee Machine never broke, so she was forced to conclude that Loretta used hers too hard. Okay, so Loretta must be a friend of Arlene's who's come over to have coffee. Um, usually she liked having Loretta around, the more the better, but she'd been out of sorts this past week. Loretta's voice broke the stillness. You don't talk about him anymore. Who? What do you mean, who? That guy you were all fired up about. Oh, somehow she thought Loretta must have meant Ricky, a fact she couldn't explain and chose not to mention. I guess I've been sort of avoiding him. So what's the problem? I wish I knew, she sat down, head in hands. This could not be delayed any longer. Last time we went out, he was acting funny. You know how people act? No, I thought lots of people acted lots of different ways. I mean... How people act when they're trying to say something. Didn't you ever do that? Practice in the mirror, something you gotta say, and then when you see them, it's just sort of hangs there, like everybody can hear it? I kept thinking that the waiter could hear it. So what did he say? He never did. But I know anyway, he was trying to break up with me. I could tell. Hmm. Was he trying to break up with her? Or was he thinking of proposing? Remember, this is Arlene, again feeling self-conscious and having her thoughts of herself kind of roll into that, right? Roll into her what she views as reality. So, okay, sorry. Um, you don't know that until you ask him. I know now. You should ask him. Then he might tell me more. She could see Trevor out the window playing on the garage roof with his friend Joe She'd never exactly told him not to, but he must have known she wouldn't like it at all that well. When she stuck her head out the kitchen window, he climbed back onto the plum tree and then waved. So, you gotta talk to him sometime. I thought maybe I'd go over to his house with Trevor. That had worked out unexpectedly well last time, but it seemed a little tricky to explain, so she didn't try. So now it's a deal that he not break up with you? What? Why does that seem so strange? Last I heard, you were just dating till Ricky came home. Arlene rocked back in her chair and fixed Loretta with that look that she reserved for the immature, the rude, the plain stupid. Loretta, um, Ricky ain't coming back. Don't you know that, Loretta? Loretta's eyebrows arch. Don't I know that? Don't I know? Honey, on last count, the only living soul on the face of the planet to not know that was you. Harleen sighed and then threw the last of her coffee down the sink drain. Well, I demand a recount, she said. When Trevor bounced through the kitchen door, she told Loretta to get lost. She said it in a kind of sign language, the kind that per that works only when you've known someone a real long time. I was just going to have one more cup, Arlene. Arlene picked up the Mr. Coffee machine, pulling the plug right out of the wall as she carried it away from the counter. Three more cups worth sloshed into the pot. Be my guest, she said as she handed the whole mess to Loretta. Well, a brick wall don't have to fall on me. 
So that kind of means that like she's getting the message. Okay. Hi, mom. How come you gave Loretta the coffee machine? Oh, no special reason. Listen, you ever seen Mr. St. Clair now that school's out? Sure, mom. I see him all the time. Where exactly? I go over to his house. Oh, we should do that sometime together. Okay, now? Well, maybe not now. Why not now? We didn't call or anything. I never call. I just ride my bike over. Well, that's different though, honey, with you. Why is that different? Mm, give me a minute to think. On their way over in the car, she asked yet again, When you go over there, Trevor, and talk to him, does he ever talk about me? Yeah. How many times? Every time. Really? Yeah, really. What does he ask? He always says, How's your mother, Trevor? And then I say, Oh, fine, she's fine. And then he says, so Trevor, does she ever ask about me? A long silence. If he asked you to marry him, would you? He ain't going to ask me that. If he did, he won't. Can we talk about something else? It was time to change the subject anyway. It wasn't a very long drive. When Reuben answered the door, Trevor bounced right in like he lived there. Hi, Reuben, he called on his way. Hi, Trevor. Arlene, this is a surprise. He was in sweat clothes and unshaven, and he looked sad. Not that any of that mattered to Arlene, who was busy noticing how much she'd missed him. It was a big, heavy feeling, suddenly, almost more than her insides could hold. Sorry I didn't call first, but... But what, Arlene? How are you going to finish that sentence? But I didn't want to give you a chance to say no? Don't bother. Or worse yet, to hear him say her name in that awful way, the way someone does when they start a sentence that's going to hurt. It's okay. Come in. She did. And she stood feeling awkward, aware of Trevor watching, not sure what to say. It wouldn't be like the last time when they were unpacking and Trevor was all lost in another world. She wouldn't be able to really talk. But then again, she consoled herself. Neither would he. Trevor... Where do you get off calling Mr. St. Clair by his first name? I didn't realize I raised you like that. He said I could, just for the summer. When I get back in the class in the fall, I gotta switch back. It's true, I said he could, Reuben agreed as he headed to the kitchen. Oh, you're in Reuben's class again next year? Arlene asked, sounded both genuinely curious and optimistic, in about equal parts. Yeah, in a school my size, you know, there's only one social studies teacher. Bless me. Sorry. Don't worry. It's just allergies. Okay. Okay. Anyways. Yeah, in a school my size, you know, there's only one social studies teacher for all the grades. Well, that's great, honey. Somewhere in the world, Arlene knew there was something more to say. If she could only find it. She perched on, Reuben, perched on Reuben's couch, and he brought her a ginger ale. The silence felt bigger than anything he, the house could contain. Trevor said, Where's Miss Liza? I think she's out in the backyard stalking birds. I'll go see, he thundered off, leaving Arlene with room to speak, which she now no longer wanted. Arlene, I... She jumped in fast before he could say that what she knew he would really say if she wasn't careful. I really missed you. You did? He sounded surprised. Oh yeah, little things. I got used to having you around. What kind of little things? Oh, you know. She knew he didn't. Like the funny messages you used to leave on my machine. I don't remember any word for word, but they were funny. I miss things like that. I'm sorry I didn't call. I've had a lot on my mind. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's what they all say, she thought to herself. She reached out and touched his right cheek. She was making a fool of herself, she knew, but she didn't care. She was almost ready to beg. Everybody regards that as so unthinkable, but somewhere in the back of her mind, she figured people do it all the time. Just listen to popular music and you'll hear it. 
I'll get down on my knees for you. Ain't too proud to beg. Please don't let go. <laughs> Anyways, before she could, Trevor came back in with the cat draped over his shoulder. They stayed off for an hour or so, during which Arlene spent most of the time marveling at the ease in which Reuben and Trevor talked to each other. She watched closely, like it was something she could learn. The following night, he called and asked her to dinner at his house. He said she was all settled in and felt ready to cook. I was hoping to get your machine, he said. I was going to leave you a funny message. Want me to hang up so you can call back? No, that's okay. I'll try to be funny when I see you. That's when she first realized that he had never been funny before. Not face to face. Only a voice on a tape. Reuben? Yes. She hated the way that she'd said his name. That big, awful, weighty way that people do before bad news. She knew it came through that way, too. She heard it in his voice. Everybody hates to hear that name spoken that way. If I were to think of a connection right now, I could picture my mother saying my name when I'm about to get trouble, in trouble. I feel like people say your names in different ways. So I want you to think of a personal connection of when somebody was saying your name um, and you knew the kind of news that you were going to get afterwards. Anyways, so... The last time we went out? Yes. I know what it was you were going to say to me. You do? Yeah, I do. But don't say it, okay? Please just don't. Okay, I won't. He sounded, she couldn't pick her finger on it. Hurt? Relieved? You won't? Not if you don't want me to. Wow, she thought as she hung up the phone. Who would have thought it would have been that easy? Now, remember... That Arlene thinks that Reuben was going to break up with her. So she's saying, don't, don't break up with me, right? And Reuben was actually going to propose. So he's thinking that Arlene is saying, don't propose to me. Anyway, next little part. The movie had ended and Reuben's VCR had automatically rewound the cassette. She wasn't sure if he was asleep. She allowed herself to drift into a feeling, a sense, that she was somehow watching all of this from above. Not so much physically, but more in terms of perspective. She'd been so sure it was over, but if she could have gotten up a little higher, seen a little further, she might have been able to see this. She wondered if she would remember this feeling next time something seemed, in the short run, to be going wrong. She knew she was probably not. She knew people transcended that line of knowledge all the time, but darned if they didn't tend to cross right back in, to cross right back again. She whispered quietly, hoping to plant words in his head without waking him, without really calling attention to herself. I'm so glad you decided not to break up with me. His eye opened, and he blinked and swallowed as though he'd been half asleep. <coughs> break up with you? Yeah. But let's not even talk about that now. I was never going to break up with you. You weren't? Well, what were you going to say to me then? Is that what you thought I was going to... That I was trying to say last time? Yeah. It wasn't? So that's what you asked me please not to say? Yeah. What was it then? She watched his chest rise with an intake of breath. Never mind, you wouldn't have liked it. Maybe not, but you sure know I gotta hear it now. Don't laugh, okay? I was gonna ask you to marry me. Arlene's throat felt tight. Even if she had known what to say, which she did not, she probably couldn't have said it. He braved the silence for a remarkable length of time. Then he said, not right away. I just thought we could be engaged for as long as it takes to get to know each other well. To take that step. I thought it might be better for Trevor and better for you. Not in that order, though. I thought of you first. I thought you'd feel better wearing an engagement ring. Even if we didn't set a date right away, it was meant as a symbol of my intentions, which are honorable. Are you ever going to say something? You bought a ring? That was
was probably as good as something as any other. I guess I did, he said. Don't answer me now. Just think about it. She said she would. She didn't say she wouldn't think about anything else, that she'd been up all night thinking about it. But that's the way it turned out to be. Okay, so I wonder what she's going to say. Make a prediction. Bye.